Good lord. <laughs> Freaking gods. Four is too many. <laughs> is it? It is. Why do you guys have so many? Well, we had three, and then we moved. Uh, uh, my my son had one um, in Seattle, and then when we moved back here, they brought it with them. So okay. we were planning to have okay. one. Okay. Okay. We are on. We're on. Boom. Yay. It's the song project. Yay. With Lindsay hello, Johnston. Hello, hello. And when you first came to the song project, you were like, well, you look like Joni Mitchell. You don't really anymore. No, I know. <laughs> you, got, yeah. you went and got all rock and roll on us. Yeah. Yep. I learned about peroxide. <laughs> How have you been? It's been a long time. Been good. Busy. Um, trying to make music a, a living. Right. <laughs> hard. Yeah, no kidding. It doesn't pay well. So, <laughs> I got on food stamps this week, so. All right. <laughs> hey, that's all good. All right, I'm going to shut the volume down. Technology. I'll tell you what, guys. Oh, cool. So, yeah, I do have it monitoring here, so if anybody wants to chime in and uh, oh, cool. yeah. ask questions or comments. We haven't had a lot of live viewers so far. Okay. You know, yeah. it's a growing enterprise. Mm -hmm. I'm sure having you on here now, it's suddenly going to be. A oh yeah, people. sure. <laughs> because you're, you know, you're you, and you're like rock and roll. <laughs> um, how prepared am I? I have got so many questions. Whoa, cool! Yeah, yeah, this yeah. This is so cool. <laughs> um, but a quick PSA. So this week is Lindsey Johnson. Next week we got Lucas McIntyre. Um, the week after that is Valentine's Day, so we're not going to do any guests that day. Maybe I'll get on and sing a couple love songs. Yeah. Uh, and then Joshua Belliardo will be here, Derek Hart, Dario Ray, Darren Eldridge, we've got a lot of people, Andy Rumsey's down the road, Dave cool. McRae, Glenn Case. And then uh, after that, we'll probably hit the big leagues and it'll be like, uh, you know, Dave Matthews yeah. and all those yeah. I don't know other famous Taylor people. Swift also Taylor writes. Swift. She yeah. writes her own songs. Yeah, she couldn't make it this week, right. so we had to get you a you know, <laughs> right. it's consolation, right? Um, so let's just start off with, uh, when did you first start writing songs? Mm, I remember trying to write a song when I was like, well, I, so I, I probably started writing songs when I was really little, like when I was five. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I loved musicals, watching Disney, right. and all the Rodgers and Hammerstein movies. Um, I, I, I remember vividly, this is a weird thing, I don't know if I've ever even told anybody this, but like, when I was little and I would try to write songs, it would m make me tear up. It was like, Aww. I would like, it, it wasn't like a sad emotional thing, it right. was like, I don't think. In it, intensity maybe more? I like. No, it was like, yeah. but every time I would... I remember being little, and I don't even remember what the songs were that I was writing, but I would be trying to make little songs, and every time I would, like, start crying. <laughs> so I remember, so I don't remember doing it when I was little. Um, and then I think, like, when I was 12, me and my girlfriends from, um, like, middle school, we all went to a Britney Spears concert, and we came back, and we were like, we're going to, like, write songs. And I had this little, like, Fisher-Price um, microphone and like tape recorder right thing. right right and like i was like yeah we can use this and right. <laughs> we got a studio yeah, we, got some, we made some demos and, right right yeah. what yeah. did you guys write was it was it did you actually like write a song then i remember or? like i think i came up with like some lyrics and a melody and i brought to them and i was like see you guys like we can do this and and then it, you know we were all 12 so then we went to recess and we forgot about it or whatever right it right, was. right. <laughs> um or i think i was probably pretty disappointed that it didn't happen um you know there other people were like gung-ho in the beginning and then no one actually wanted knew, right, knew right, what to do right um and then i remember like when i was 16 or 17 i picked up a guitar and i wanted to play guitar and i started writing a song and i could do the the words and the melody but I was like, how in the world do you, like, I came up with words and a melody, now and I knew, I knew, like, right. three chords, right. and they didn't go together, and I was like, so... <laughs> like, three different keys, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, okay, well, I give up on that. <laughs> right, right. So, yeah. So, do you, uh, so I take it you weren't, because I saw in that little 
there was like a little short documentary thing, yeah. like five minutes. Mm -hmm. It would say how you started playing guitar when you were 25. Yeah, so... Did you play anything before that, or...? Yeah, I played the oboe. Okay, okay. Like in high school, like that? Like in high college. School. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that was my, more of my musical background, is that I was classically playing, like, orchestral music. Right. And um, I did a lot of things for scholarships. Mm -hmm. Like, that was a big, like... Uh, incentive for me I guess and and then like and then I got like I would get the scholarships and I was in college like playing the oboe and hating it and I was like why am I doing this like so I remember like making a deal with myself that like after I graduated from college I would I was like I will learn to play an instrument that I can sing with because I love singing right. I did jazz choir in high school for a year and I loved it um but you can't play the oboe and sing at the same time true, so true. after college I like picked up the guitar and, um, like, I was, but I was still working and, like, not spending very much time with it. I took, like, lessons for, like, five months or something like that. Right. And then, so that was when I was 21. And then didn't really play it until I quit teaching, which was 25. Okay. And then I was like, okay, I bought the guitar, I bought it. the amp, right. I, like, right. spent all the time. And how, so that was, um, so I remember when you first came to the song project, you, I think, only had a couple songs, really, yeah. didn't you, at that time? Yeah. There was one about, like, you had spent time down in Central America. Oh, yeah. And you'd written a song for a guy down I, there or something. I could totally play that, yeah. Right? I, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember, and it sticks out in my mind because you had said it was, like, one of the first songs you'd written, and it surprised me because it seemed incredibly sophisticated for, mm -hmm. you know, for that level. I mean, my first songs were, you know, after seeing, for you, it was Britney Spears, for me, it was uh, the Ramones, you know, yeah. so it was like, <laughs> oh, you're so much cooler than I am. <laughs> it, it is a cooler origin story. However, it doesn't lend itself to, like, sophisticated music, mm. really. Okay. I mean, I don't know if I, Britney Spears does either. But. Well, okay, yeah, <laughs> granted, granted, that's, that's true. No, and I wouldn't say that the Ramones are not unsophisticated. Mm -hmm. It's just raw, mm -hmm. you know, and simple in a, in a, not easy, but simple. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like rock and roll. Rock and roll is easy. Yeah. But not simple. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. It's easy in the sense that it's like, it's not complicated usually. Right. You know? Right. Yes. Uh, but not everyone can do it necessarily. No, no, definitely yeah. not. Definitely not. Yeah. I, don't, I don't mean, I mean, it's simple, it's simple but not, not easy. easy. That's what I mean. Yeah. 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 Um, but what about, uh, so we, so Britney Spears, that was sort of like the first inspiration to write? It was like, that's when you sort of like, that, that switch went and you were like, I can write songs. I think it was more that it was the girls that, like, it was, right, it was, right. like, it was Mendy Puckett's birthday party. Okay. There was like four of us, four or five of us that went to the Gorge to see Britney Spears. And so that was like the, maybe one of my first concerts where I was like, right, right. live music is so cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Be like, and you know, she, she was huge at the time, so she had all the money to right. do the Big production right, and right. um and she sure still does have all the money to do that if she wants but <laughs> um it was i think it was more that it was like it was a weekend where we all were like we could do that and not necessarily it wasn't necessarily britney spears it was like the the gorge so it's the whole energy of the, the thing. energy right, and the right. girls all together and like right. we can make a girl right, band right. and and like spice girls were big around that time too right. and we're all into the spice girls so um yeah, but I think, like, actual, like, when, when I actually, Yeah, so, like, like flash forward, yes, when I yeah. started really doing it, um, I, I mean, I started with, like, jazzy stuff. Um, right. That's what I felt, like, with that, that early stuff, though, of yours that I heard, there was definitely a jazz influence. Yeah. Almost a Spanish jazz, mm -hmm. like a flamenco kind of yeah. feel to some of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, what were you listening to at the time when you first started? doing that um i really liked jamie colm he was oh yeah yeah big influence um he's so cool yeah. have um, you heard his cover of uh that sophie and steven song uh the watch the watch tower yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah yes yeah yeah he's amazing i actually brought that song into the song project and play it just to like demonstrate of like how what a cover can do yeah. to a song you know yeah. in terms of yeah. 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 No, he's, he's yeah. good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you were kind of listening to some more jazzy stuff. Mm-hmm. 
I, I mean, I was, what was that? Then I was probably more into the, like, um, folk, folk, I was really into Sufjan Stevens. Right, right. I was, like, into Bon Iver. Um, yeah, yeah. Jamie Coleman had the jazz uh, influence. I'm trying to remember, though, like, oh, yeah, there was, like, um, like, Greg, Gregory Allen Isakoff. Oh, yeah, That yeah. sort of genre was more, um, more of what was influencing me, what I was listening to when right. I started writing. Songs. Right, right, right. Cool. And then you kind of had a sea change into the rock and roll. And I remember when that happened, because I remember you talking to me about that feeling of, you know, like, having done the singer-songwriter thing and that feeling of intimacy of drawing people in mm -hmm. and uh, I think you were going through you were kind of struggling with that like transitioning into the rock and roll and not having that feeling there anymore with yeah. the audiences yeah. although I'm sure that's it's it's that's evolved and changed yeah, yeah you got yeah. comfortable with it but yeah but I know what you mean that is because it's such a different vibe it's such a different energy between the crowd mm -hmm. and a person when you're just there mm -hmm. vulnerable drawing people in as opposed to just that kind of like hey we're all in this together you know like yeah. yeah I think I actually that's why I wanted that's part of the reason that I wanted to stop doing the like folk singer songwriter thing was it not that it was too vulnerable but it was too lonely right it right. was like yeah I felt like I was connecting with people like after the show maybe I'd like have these good conversations with people but I want to I wanted to be with somebody on stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I wanted to high five somebody right, afterwards right, right. or be like, man, <laughs> we right, right. like sucked right, <laughs> like together. Right. And it was always like just lonely. Right. No, I know what you mean. I mean, it's, you know, I've played in bands ever since I started. I mean, I've been playing music for a long time, but when I, as soon as I started playing in bands, it's like there's something about, there's something about that communication and, I don't even know how to describe it, but the thing you get with another musician when you guys are, are like in the pocket and it's just on, yeah, it's not comparable to anything else in life. Uh -uh. You know, it's not comparable to personal relationships or anything. It's like, it's just different, right? I mean, it's like, there's nothing, there's nothing like it. Mm -mm. And it's almost like ES. It's the closest I've ever seen to ESP. Yeah. It's when you're with another musician and it's just like. You do this thing and they're doing the thing at yeah. the same time yeah. <laughs> but you didn't talk about it beforehand yeah. but it's just there yeah and it's just like yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know? totally. and i miss that i don't play you know i, I just play like once or twice a year nowadays uh -huh. with the band but uh, yeah yeah it's, it's such a good feeling yeah and i can see why that's appealing but what was the so it was really that shift in like you, you just wanted to have some uh, a different approach i mean because i guess you could have done the same thing by taking your uh, what you were doing and then like at, you know getting a band to do those things and have that experience well, what was it that made you kind of really want to go because I mean obviously like what you're doing now totally different than what you were doing then yeah um, which is awesome mm -hmm. but you know what was the what was the motivation there like aside from the the emotional thing of wanting to play with people because you could do that you know you could do that in that genre and maybe I could now but I couldn't find anybody to play with me Right, right. Back then. Um, and not, it wasn't that I couldn't find anyone to play with me. I wanted, I had a sound in my head. I want, like, I tried. I think I tried for probably two years to find a drummer to play that sort of music. Right. And that's, in my head, that's what had to happen first was, like, mm. get a drummer to have a beat there. Right, right. And then you add the bassist and then right, you right. add the other stuff. But, um... Yeah, so I couldn't find anybody who wanted to just be like, tsh, tsh, right, right, doing like that, yeah, yeah. You know, like, right, right. I, I asked people and the mellow drums, right? Yeah. <laughs> Drummers like to, to get crazy. Right? And that's why I started writing rock and roll music. I was like, fine, I'm going to write something that a drummer will want to play with. <laughs> gotcha. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Well, why don't we, why don't we do a song and, yeah, yeah, let's start off with that. I kind of want to play that that song that you brought up because I I haven't played it for a minute, but um. And you still remember it? Yeah. That's pretty amazing. I am gonna pull this in a little closer here. Let's see. I mean, hopefully I remember it. We'll see. And 
we're not like on a stage here or anything, so you don't have to be like right up on the mic, you know, okay. shouting or anything. <laughs> we have to leave that to the mic. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, we'll see if I remember all of it. We'll we'll fake it as we What's go. What's it called? <laughs> you can remember all the lyrics, yeah, yeah. but not the title. <laughs> the bar song. The bar song. Because mm-hmm. um, it was all the whole setting was in a bar. So this is about that my Latin American lover. <laughs> so part of it's in Spanish. Right. something you would ever throw into like because I saw I noticed uh, I've been unfortunately I haven't seen your newest incarnation yeah uh, um, but I did notice uh, when I was doing some looking online uh, that you do play some solo stuff in conjunction with your shows 
Yeah. Like, is, is it that kind of, is it more mm-hmm. mellow stuff like yeah. that? or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Some of the, some of the songs I can definitely cross over. Um, like, mm. the, the songs I play on keys, I can definitely do in both right, the genres. Right, right. Um, but yeah, it's like, yeah, I have the mellow stuff. Basically, I just, I quit my job and wanted to be as marketable as possible. Right. So I have basically two different shows. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you can do where it's just you, you can mm-hmm. do with the band, mm-hmm. you can do both. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. And how long, have, how long has the any spent together now? Th- three months. And it's you and two other people? Is that right? There's actually, like, I have two different bands. Oh, okay, okay. It's the, so the Ennies literally just means anybody who... Okay. <laughs> anybody who shows up anybody, with an instrument? <laughs> anybody who's, like, willing to, like, learn the songs and and go okay. on the road for, okay. like, no money. Mm-hmm. Um, In other words, be a musician? Yeah. Minus the learning the songs part, most of us don't do right. that. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. Going on the road for no money, yeah. I think we're all down with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's, yeah. Um, so Chase and Kevin are from Spokane, and they're, they've been doing most of the shows with me. And okay. then also Drums and bass? Drums, yeah. Okay. And then there's also, I also have another um, couple guys in the Tri-Cities. Um, and I'm actually probably going to be, like, holding auditions, for lack of a better word, soon because I want to be able to keep this pace up and I really would rather be doing the rock and roll stuff. Right, right. Um, but I mean, I would need people to that were like that have money in the bank that are willing to quit their jobs. Right. right. Like that could survive for a little while until it's really profitable. And so right now I'm just like if I can get like three or four solid bands then you know, we I go one one week with this band, one week with the other, or like right. four days here, four right. days there, and no one else has to quit their jobs. But right, right, we'll see. Um, have you ever considered like, or have you looked at like relocating at all, or is this something you really dedicated to being here? Or? No, I was planning on moving to LA in. I, I looked all pretty much all of August. I applied for jobs in LA, and. Um, and there and there are other places that I could go. Um, I'm sure New York would be a better scene. Austin would be. There's lots of musicians there. Mm-hmm. Um, not a better scene. More people that right. want to do this. It's a larger pool scene. of people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I feel like there's there are a lot of great musicians here, but not a ton that are trying to do that as their only thing. Right. People go right. to LA to make it right to, right to do right, it right and um and so anyways that's but so I applied for jobs there for a month and every job that I applied for I would have to be working 40 hours a week at a job that I really didn't like right. not getting paid that much um because I, I won't go back to teaching teaching is the thing that I could probably get paid decently right, at right. and it just it's not worth it. It's too much stress. So, um, yeah, anything that I would be doing, I'd be working full time to just barely pay rent. Right. And there would, I know, right. I, I wouldn't have any. It would suffer. I would not right. have any energy to pour into this. Right. So, right. It, I like my other thought was to, and this is kind of where I still, I still have the opportunity to do this if I want to, is I got an SUV and like I built a platform in it where like I can have a bed, mm-hmm. and um, like just go there and like live in your car live in my car <laughs> right um or like save some money up and right and yeah camp basically right to make the connections and right. but not have to invest in right well you know i mean the, the big advantage of those markets too is not just the larger pool of people to, that you're drawing from and that there's that creates a sort of a shared energy but um just being around the music industry, you know, I know most of the people that I know that have had success in the music business uh, have have done it one of two ways. One way, which the most direct example of I have from my hometown is Dave Matthews Band, right? Okay. Like, like they, you know, they didn't leave Charlottesville 
until long, you know, after they were until after they were popular. But they built by just going, you know, touring a cycle over yeah. and over and over, building the crowd, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, eventually parlaying that into. So when they did go to a um, record label, they didn't. It was like you need us. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we've got this base, we can sell this the albums. Yeah. We've got a career. Yeah. You know what can you do for us to make that yeah. to make it bigger? Uh, and then the other way is uh, the happy accident, and that's what that's what being in those markets gives you is yeah. the more opportunity for those happy accidents. Yeah. You know, some somebody happens to see you in a yeah. bar. Yeah. You know, and that's and that's it's weird and it's and it's crazy because that's not how life sh should necessarily work yeah. for something when you're like working that hard at it. Yeah. But it's just a fact, right? Like some executive is, happens to be at a bar and mm. then it's like you're playing on stage and you're like, ooh, I like that. Right. You know? <laughs> right. I, I, yeah, that's, and I think that having, at least in Spokane right now, or being in the Pacific Northwest, I don't want to be in the Pacific Northwest. Not because of the, like, I love the people, I love my family, I love nature and all of right, right. The, that we have going, the clean air, all of it. I, the winters are really hard yeah, with yeah. the lack of sun. Like, right, right. from a, like a mental health So point personally of view. you feel that a lot. Yeah. Right. Okay. And so, um, I, been trying to get out of here for like 10 years but <laughs> there's just like the fact of the matter is I think there's a like, song in there somewhere <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's like if I could if I can you can mix you can record and mix an album anywhere right, right and if you can get that done you can record a music video anywhere so if I can get like some of the the bass mm -hmm. those sort of things down Almost there precursors kind of so yeah. then I then I go and Play in a bar in LA, and then if somebody comes up and is like, "Do you have anything anywhere?" I'm like, right, "Well, here, right. check out the music video that we yeah, recorded yeah, yeah. for half price in Spokane because right. it's not right. it's not LA." Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. That's. Yeah, it kind of makes. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, and you know, just geographically too, as a base of operations, Spokane is not situated real great mm, with yeah. a lot of big markets. You know what yeah. I mean? Like. You know, what if you go east of here, you got to go, gosh, almost, almost to like Minneapolis before uh -huh. you're hitting a big market, you know, yeah. and then, and then west, of course, is Seattle. Yeah. Um, it's a hard place, I think, to be a base of operations for a touring band. Yeah. I would probably want to relocate if I were touring. Right? Yeah. Because it's, we're just a long way from everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, let's get back to songwriting craft sure. here. Sure. Um, when you sit down to write, and nothing's coming to you what's your strategy how do you deal with what we all deal with <laughs> um i usually listen to something else mm. I, like i um a lot of what i have the songs have come when like it i, I guess usually i don't sit down and nothing's coming um right usually if i sit down to write a song it's because something is already I've been washing the dishes, I've been driving, mm -hmm. and something came already. Gotcha. And so then, usually I'll like record a voice memo of that, and then of that little snippet, then go and try to find the key when I actually have a guitar in my hand. Right. And then try to build the rest of it from there. Right. Um, but if I really am sitting down and like, I'm gonna force out a song, um, I'll start with like, like, okay, so, like, one of the first songs that I ever wrote um, that I played at the Song Project early on, I went and Googled, um, like, four-chord jazz progression. Okay, okay. So I found a progression, and right. then I wrote to that. Okay. So, like, I'll find something that maybe I want to learn. Right. And then, like, a, a riff or... Um, uh, yeah, like a song that I really love, and I'm like, oh, it'd be cool to write like a, it'd be cool to write a, a song kind of like that has this Eric Clapton vibe. Right, and so right. I'll go to that and I'll learn his song, and then in that process, I'll just some be, kind of inspiration hits, right? Right. Yeah. Do you find when you're learning, like, because I know that you are uh, notoriously diligent about practicing and and your I was. your craft, you were, <laughs> or, or you were. <laughs> I was. I was. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Not so much anymore? Mm. Just too busy? Too busy. I, I, that's... That's a good thing, though, right? I mean, if you're good. playing, right? It's good. It's sort of. I mean, you're still playing every day, right? Yeah. Right. Well. Yeah. I mean, mostly. There, I'm, I'm sure there are days that I don't play, but... It, yeah, it's like... I, I, I'm basically, like, right now, I am... I'm fighting to keep my head above water. So, right. like, if it's more important to book shows it, right now yeah, it's more yeah. important to book shows for March or to get like it was more important today to get the CDs burned so that I can sell them tomorrow at the right, show right, right right that sort of thing wait a show tomorrow where's that what <laughs> <laughs> smooth segue where are you playing tomorrow um observatory the observatory oh, spoken right, right yeah I was thinking about I was thinking of going down there tonight uh Daniel Champagne is playing do you know who he is I don't know um, I think so you have rehearsal tonight, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Well, he's, he's starting at 9. If you have a chance, go check him out. I'm not sure if I'll get down there, but we saw him before. He's from Australia, plays acoustic. Um, uh, amazing player. He does, he, he does a lot of that, like, playing percussion yeah. on the guitar while he's playing his yeah. songs. and Like a really good finger picker, uh, but like energy, yeah. you know? And he's yeah. kind of got that a rock and roll energy, but it's yeah. singer-songwriter stuff. Really yeah. good, really good. Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, in fact, you would probably be a great like opener for that or something. Oh, cool! Know? Like yeah. that kind of that kind of stuff. Yeah. He's really, it's really good stuff. Um, anyway, uh, why don't we do another song? Yeah. I'm, I'm listening to my own voice. Don't like it. Okay. <laughs> um... What you want to play? Anything you want? You want to do piano or keyboards, whatever, or uh, guitar or whatever? Yeah, let's. I'll do. Um... Okay, so this is a good example mm -hmm. of one that like. I w had started to play the blues or like learn the blues mm -hmm. because I knew that it was like easy to solo in them. Right. and so I was like trying to make that transition from sure. like just playing cowboy chords to like sure. being a lead guitar player so I started playing the blues and I totally messed the song up because like usually blues are like 8 bar or 12 bar blues right, right. this one is like a 13 bar blues Okay. so like I, I like I wrote the song and then I like went to my guitar teacher and he's like that's weird but right. it's great, like, great, just do that. <laughs> so, That's well, a good thing, though, I think, yeah, right? It's I like... think so. I think so. Um, yeah, yeah. So this is this is one that I'll, I, I'll play, like, in both settings. Gotcha. So if I have the electric guitar, it'll sound different.
<laughs> is that how and how old is that song? Like how long ago did you write that? Three years ago? Okay. Ish, two and a half years ago, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's like when you're uh I mean I guess if you're going if you're going in a rock and roll direction, blues is sort of the foundation yeah. of all of that, right? Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. Um, when you I, earlier, when you, you you have two guys that, that play with you pretty regularly, right? Mm -hmm. Like when you have a song you've written mm -hmm. uh, for the band, what state is it is it in when you bring it to them? Is it already pretty much like I want you to do this and this, mm -hmm. or is it is it a little more like organic? Like I've got this tune, and like oh yeah, let's do this, let's yeah. do that, yeah. I'm not very good at jamming yet. Okay, okay. So it's more like I have it in my head the way it goes. Um, and I like fleshed a lot of these songs out. So I was, um, so I was in the band Donna Donna. Mm -hmm. And before that, I was playing with um, this guy, Kent Uland. Um, and he, he was playing drums with me, but he's, like I look up to him from a production like point of view a lot, um, uh, just like what other sounds could, and he, so he like added some like organ into mm -hmm. my idea into my ideas and actually helped me like he pointed out in this song he was like oh you add an extra bar here right. where you don't other places so then I was able to kind of fix the form, um, right right so but like so this song I've played with him. I played in Donna Donna, and now I'm playing with this band. Right, right. So at this point, it's kind of like, I, all the parts are there. I love, I love, like I haven't ever played with a bass player until now, right. and the stuff that he's adding, I love it. Right. Um, and uh, Chase is like a totally different drumming style, so he's doing things um, differently, but. Right. Um, but like, you're not like, so you, when you take like say you take a song like this to to these guys, uh, uh, with the bass for example, you're not you're not saying like, oh well, here's the bass line, no. right? You're like here's the no. chords, yep. here's the yeah. form, yeah. and then go yeah. to town with yeah. whatever it is you're doing, yeah. and then uh, I would suppose if somebody was going way off the reservation, you might be like, let me try something different, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, and that's even so even like. Like some of the songs that we're playing, we had recorded with Donna Donna, and I tried to not even send them those versions. Like I right, I right, right. I didn't you didn't want, want to like poison the well. Yeah. Right? Oh, like come up with your own thing um, for your part, and um, and that's like kind of the idea behind the Ennies too. Is like I had been playing with Kevin. We had been like he wrote bass parts for all these songs that we've been playing. He's in Spokane, and. I needed to get recordings done like mm -hmm. ASAP and he didn't have, he like wasn't able to do them as fast as I needed them. So then I, I sent it to a couple of other friends that play bass and had somebody else like write a bass part. I was like, oh, that's, that's cool. Let's like use that. Right, and right, so, right. yeah, I'm just kind of open. Gotcha. Yeah. Nice. Um, when you shifted into the rock and roll stuff and we talked a little bit about motivations of it, um, was there a conscious, like, so, the way that and this isn't really directly just about songwriting as much as it is about just the whole thing, but um, so rock and roll takes a different kind of showmanship, right? Like yeah. when you're on stage playing uh, acoustically, you know, there's a value in a certain way of presenting yourself to the yeah. audience, right? Yeah. Same with rock and roll. Yeah. Uh, is that something you struggled with? Did it come pretty naturally? That was probably my favorite part about it. Yeah. Like probably still is. Is I feel like. I could easily, sometimes I even say like I think I'm more of an actress than a singer right, right. because it's more like, well I mean it is right, it's a persona, right? Yeah, that's like I think that I could probably be an, like an actress in like a musical or something where I, could, right, I got right, to do right. both those things but play different parts and so like I like being able to step on the stage and be like okay this is like, now we're playing at the winery and we're going to you know, be that kind of demure or whatever, right? Yeah, yeah like yeah. I like picking out the different outfits and 
and and then like okay that and like thinking about the audience and even within right. the rock and roll gigs that we play it's like like it's fun to be able to think like put a set together for dive bars versus right right, right. um oh this is a, this is a rock and roll set but it's a two hour set at a bar where people are gonna want covers like right right and but it's fun to just like right. morph do you and you don't like do you get uh nervous on stage with that stuff at all or not anymore not anymore did uh, you at first though like oh yeah it, yeah it was terrible i don't know like I mean, I have really bad anxiety, and like I've been, I've been on anti-anxiety medicine for two years now, so I don't know how much of my nervousness has gone away because of that, or just because like I've. Right. Well, I guess when you I mean, also when you do something over and over, yeah. it gets easier. Yes. Know, right. I mean, it gets better. Yeah. 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 And like doing like now, it's more like I'm not afraid that I'm gonna mess up. It's like I know I'm gonna mess up. Right. Right. No one dies. It's fine. Right. No one cares. Most like, people don't even notice. Yeah. You're yeah. gonna notice like a million times more than anyone yeah. else. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and there's like always gonna be another chance. Like if you right. mess that chance up, if there if there really was somebody in the room that really needed to hear it perfect, right. That right. time, like you'll probably get another time to. Right. And that usually is not the case, anyways. Right. 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 And the only time that would be a, I mean, I could even in my imagination the worst case scenario would be you'd have to be train wrecking every song yeah all the way through yeah. you know to, for that to really be mm -hmm. a, a career mistake yeah. you know what i mean like yeah. you know yeah there's something about i mean it, it isn't it's the imperfections really that that make something have character anyway yeah you know totally you know every, no everybody's you know we're all familiar with that like studio perfection where it just like it loses something yeah from well, that kind of i mean american idol isn't interesting to me at all no yeah me neither yeah. it's like yeah they have incredible voices but it's, yeah. no i don't care right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> too perfect yeah um when you're writing uh, uh let's go to let's talk about lyrics um are you a words or music first person usually uh the words and the melody come at the same time okay so uh, and usually the words don't really mean anything okay at first so right, like right. i can like Okay, yeah, so here's an example. I wrote this song called Hand on the Level. Okay. And for whatever reason, or, um, yeah, and so I, I, I just had this in my head. Hand on the level, hand on the level. Didn't mean anything. Right. But I had that, and I liked the way it sounded. I liked right. the words. It kind of came up, I had an image in it. And, and so then, once I had that part, that's like, and I was singing that, and it was catchy. Then I sat down, found the key, and then I was like, okay, well, now I have this. So now this. i got to flesh out, what does it mean? Yeah, right? what does it mean to me? Right. What does it mean to me in this, this point of life? And then I can write all the rest of the words, but the rest right. of the words don't really, they don't really matter to me as long as there's, like, like a hook. And that was, that's where, like, I think rock and roll music was different. Right, and right. Like, that was that change. And in the beginning, that change going from, singer songwriter folk musician to rock and roll musician i wanted to be more of like an impressionist painter mm -hmm. rather like than a like a real still life painter like sure. making it all look real i wanted it to be like um it's like fuzzy and but it's still art and it's still like meaning it can be meaningful and it can right, be beautiful right. but more like I wanted to like pursue the art of like image yeah yeah, yeah. interesting words together like even if they don't right, make sense right, like right. um like a lot of the Beatles songs later on like right um come together like that song just has a bunch of really weird words and you're like 
Right. What does this mean? And then you're like, it doesn't mean anything, but the right. words are cool. Like, right. Yeah. No, I mean that's. I mean that's. That's my approach too. Is uh, I think it was imagistic writing. You know. Yeah. It's not about like I don't write story songs. Really. Or, or character songs. You know, they're all like, just, imagistic. Yeah. Uh, sort of phrases. That, yeah. Uh, that. Uh, I think there's a, one thing that appeals to me about that kind of writing. Uh, is is that it's so wide open to anybody who hears it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you end up with people who are like, I love that song you wrote about the homeless, you know? <laughs> and you're like, yeah. what song are you even talking <laughs> yes. about? Like, yeah. Yeah. You know, or oh, whatever yeah. it is, you uh -huh. know? Because, because humans are such efficient narrative constructors. Yeah. You know, we're so good at making narratives. Yeah. We make them all the time, yeah. even when they don't exist, yes. right? Like, yeah. history of religion or yeah. anything like yeah. that, right? Um, and so there's something writing in that way really gives people the opportunity to create a narrative about a song or, yeah. you know, and, and it can make it resonate with them mm -hmm. even yeah. more than if something that's really specific we're like, well, that's never happened to me. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but sometimes it's like, it, I feel like I was a little bit, um, insecure about starting that first because, um, it, it seemed a little bit superficial because literally sometimes I just wanted to put like words that sounded cool together. Right, like right. I love the way the syllables, like I like saying them. Right. And yeah. Like, you know, you know what made me feel better about that? Because I had that same exact thing. I thought, oh my gosh, you know, this seems like a kind of a cheap thing to do. Right. Like yeah. I'm just, but I found out that, uh, that's exactly how Paul Simon writes. And he's one of the great songwriters of all yeah. time. And he he described writing songs as like he would it would often just be syllables that he thought it sounded good. Yeah. You know, and then later he would just kind of like make it into words, yeah. you know, but yeah. it was, at first it was just like this sounded good going bobbity bop boo rather yeah. than bibbity bop, you know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. and um that made me feel a whole lot better. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, all right, if it's okay for Paul Simon, yeah. clearly it's good enough for me. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> Um, how much do you think about, and this might be, again, with rock and roll, it's a little bit different, I suppose, but uh, how much do you think about form when you're writing? Like, oh, I've got to have a bridge in here. I've got to do this. I've got to make a, you know? Is that something that you consider, or, or is it? Yeah, now, uh, yeah, I feel like kind of at a disadvantage in little ways because I learned a bunch of different types of forms and the way they work. So it's like an advantage and a disadvantage. Like, because when I tried to write a blues, but I didn't really understand the form of the blues, mm -hmm. I messed it up. But I came up with something that was original right, and different. Right, right. And um, now I feel like it's pretty formulaic. And maybe like my next. So yes, it's like, Yes, like chorus, maybe slight, small instrumental break, chor chorus, sorry, no, verse, small instrumental break, verse, uh, bridge, chorus, verse, bridge, chorus, chorus. Right, right. Like, the, yes, there's definitely, like, a form formula, and it might not always be exactly like right, that. But right, right. But yeah. you're keeping it in your mind as you're constructing something or arranging it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and sometimes a bridge doesn't come to me and I like try to force a bridge in there and it's just like, or I just let the bridge go. Um, uh, but yeah, maybe like my next thing, like when I actually, I haven't had very much time to spend songwriting, doing songwriting. Um, right. And maybe when I can get back to that, it'll be like, I'll be able to challenge myself out of right. that. Right, but right. You know, it's a, it's it, it's a difficult um, it's a difficult transition from writing when you when your when your focus is songwriting and you you know you're not on the road you're not doing all this stuff it's it's easy to develop like okay here's my routine I'm gonna write songs and do this and then once you get going um, and you've got a band and you're on the road a lot it can it for a lot of a lot of people just don't write during mm -hmm. that time you know because it's it's just it's it's sort of discombobulating right yeah. you're in a whole different 
you know, thing. But then there's other people that sort of learn to write. You're writing in hotel rooms. Yep. You're writing in the van. Yeah. Um, but that can also change. You know, that your your environment influences your writing too. And you'll see people like change the, the way they write because it's like oh, I'm writing in a hotel room. Right. And that can be really invigorating. Right. But it could also be distracting. Yeah. You know, so it's just a whole. It's like how do I adjust to a different? Because like I know for a lot of writers, myself included. You, end, you you develop like rituals of writing kind of you know like what I mean what? Um, well like I was I was talking about this uh, one of our last episodes about how like like I used to be a smoker right and so part of my songwriting ritual was like a cup of coffee and a cigarette right mm -hmm. and that was like that just was part of the oh. gestalt of a headspace yeah. for writing you know it was like yeah. now I'm in my writing space. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, cigarettes were a part of that because that makes it much harder to quit because then you feel like this is part of my creative process. It's yes. not just a physical habit. Yeah. It's like this is part of what I do to, to do whatever I'm yeah. doing, you know? Yeah. Uh, so it, it could be dangerous to associate bad habits with those things. Yeah. The history of rock and roll is sure. <laughs> <laughs> There's yes. a lot of a history of bad habits along with it. Yeah. It's like people who get really wasted before they play, yep. and that becomes the way they have to do it to play, mm -hmm. to get over their stage fright or yeah. whatever it is, you know. And those are really dangerous to start those kinds of rituals. Yeah, right? or, to, because, or to get like, yeah, totally like, yeah, blazed or stoned or, right, know, right, on whatever to, in order to be creative. Right, right. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a dangerous path to yeah. be on because it will inevitably burn and crash you yeah. you know no matter what it is yeah cocaine alcohol yeah. weed yeah cigarettes doesn't yeah. matter yeah you know anything that you're associating with your creative output yeah is is difficult totally um let's do another song yeah um like david byrne Ooh. what do you mean jim i don't know what jim means because I didn't see the comment he early, was... right on time. He said, like, David Byrne, but I don't know what he means. Oh, huh. Maybe it was some sort of songwriting something. Oh, maybe gonna... it was about the lyrics. Yeah. Uh -huh. Want to do the... Uh... Yeah, I'm going to do uh, a piano song. Do cool. I need to move the, the mic up here? Uh, or... I'll get it. Okay. Let's move this out of the way. Okay, I'm going to come around here. Okay. Oh, the part, yeah. This is the part people have been waiting for when I'm going to show my butt to the uh, yes. camera. Yes! So, try and contain yourselves. Also, I don't want to take this on you. Let's go like that. Maybe. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're going to get the keyboard up here. Okay. To the 12.8 million viewers. Woo um, you're going to have to wait a few minutes. Yeah, think of some good questions, everybody. <laughs> like Paul Simon. We see you. We see you, Jim. Oh yeah, he's talking about like lyrically, okay. and I think that's that definitely true. Like if you listen to like Talking Heads or, or uh, David Byrne, he's got that same kind of sort of imagistic approach to lyrics. This is not gonna work. It's gonna fall over. Again, we don't have to be like. Um, Right up on it. Right up on it, because cool. everything will be picked up pretty well. How's that for Great. position? Is that okay? Yeah, and I'll, I can adjust over here, too. This is one of the newer ones.
Is that called You Bend Me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's um, a song called You Send Me. Yeah, yeah. That. So that, it was an echo of that song. Right, right. Yeah. I've had that happen to me too where I was like listening to a song and then like you kind of change a word and think, oh, that's kind of an interesting. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and actually, so um, I wrote, so I have a do I need to plug this in? No, no. We're, okay. I, think, I, think, I think we can probably pick it up. Okay. Uh, people can, somebody can let me know if, it, if they can't hear you. Okay. So I had this song. song so then I took most of the lyrics but I took that you bend me and that was the I made it this one right, right. and we play both the songs and I don't know if anyone notices that they're the right. same words right <laughs> <laughs> actually that's kind of a neat uh, uh, experiment you could do with uh, with songwriting and performing would be to like because I've thought about uh, I mean I was thinking of it in a slightly different way but but to take to take like the same lyrics but like create different songs out of it. Yeah. You know? Totally. Um, it'd actually be a, kind of a cool experiment to, to make an album, like 10 songs, 
where it's the same lyrics yes. for all ten, yes. but completely different songs. Whoa. Wouldn't that be kind of a fun yeah. idea? Yeah. You know, we're yeah. just like radically different, not yeah. just like totally. you know, fast or slower, yeah. but like yeah. you know, yes. different arrangements, totally. and presentation of lyrics. I mean, yeah, um, that's cool. Or I, I had thought about it as like if I do a whole album of songs and then re-record those same songs in the same order, mm -hmm. but could, with completely different kind yeah. of. So it's just the same words. Yeah, you know? totally. That'd be, kinda, that'd be fun too. Yeah. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about because I, I when I watched that little doc, you, you one of the things you talked you you talked a lot about in there was um, and in your description as well about sort of a, um, coming from a from a female perspective and that aspect and you had worked with the girls camp or something mm -hmm. the um, song girls, camp or girls something? rock camp girls rock girls camp rock and, and uh, so what like I just want to let you talk about that a little bit like about you know being a girl in rock and roll because i know that's you know even 50 years on in in the genre it's still you know and there's been women in rock and roll that whole time yeah but it's different isn't it i mean and it still is yeah you know i just like i mean I, it took that i think that it's like rock and roll had its heyday in like 1969 right. like right um and women have come so far in so many other areas and there's still a long way to go, but like we haven't come very far in that area. Like right. I can't think of any actually like, yeah, I, I've meant to put this out. Like I would like somebody to tell me like one household name of a female guitarist, a right. female like soloist. Right. And like, I know, I know a handful of them because sure. I researched it, but it's not like there's no Jimi Hendrix out there. Like, right? There's no female Van Halen that like. Right. Everyone knows the name, even if they don't sure. exactly know why they sure. know the name. Like people just don't. I don't know. So it's just weird. It just doesn't make any sense because like we have fingers, just like. Right. <laughs> it's like there's nothing. Right. I don't know. It's so weird. Yeah, no, it's true. I mean, even more than rock and roll. The guitar itself has been a boys club and it always has been right i mean it's yeah. and it is an odd thing you know um yeah it's it's weird and it's yeah i don't like and i didn't i didn't realize that until i was 25 like right, right. and so when that's when i was like well this is fucked up sorry oh it's yeah like this doesn't make any sense like so I mean that's part of the reason that I was like well I'm I guess I'm gonna do it like somebody needs to do it you know and there are people that are doing it for right sure. for sure but um there needs to be more people doing it anyways so like there and there are lots of also women that play guitar but hardly ever do you see a woman sitting down to to jam with the boys mm -hmm. on hardly any instrument right like the soloing thing like in that yeah lead guitar for sure you don't really see it. you I mean, don't see it you, you, you see a lot of women maybe playing rhythm guitar yeah you know and uh, and singing but yeah um yeah where's this where's uh where's vanessa ray vaughn you know yeah. like, <laughs> right yeah uh, well I maybe mean, it's vanna oh maybe it is <laughs> i don't know but there's been i think you know women have been still not, I'm not trying to like, uh, you know, pr been pretty well represented in terms of in the entertainment industry, in music. Yeah. You know what I mean? And there's lots of great, you know, female songwriters, you totally. know, clearly, totally. right? You know, some of the greats of all time. Yeah. You know, Carole King, people like that. Yeah. Um, but we don't have, if you look now in, in the music industry, well, I mean, we're not in the era of rock and roll per se. Yeah. No, um, we're not. But, but there's you know, women are are tend to be in the pop genre or R and B, uh -huh. you know, yeah. where the focus is really on them as a performing artist, uh -huh. not even necessarily as a songwriter or as a musician. Uh -huh. And when they are as a musician, you see it more. They tend to be more like piano players. Uh -huh. Like if you think of like the people that are really out there uh, combining their yep. their their virtuosic 
playing with singing, it's it tends to be keyboards. Lady Gaga is a great example of right. someone oh, yeah. who can like yeah. do the whole thing. She has an right. incredible voice. She right. can kill the keys. Like right. she can play, you know, classically right. trained, right. and she can dance and sing and do the whole thing. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. And then there's like, as a creative force, like I think of somebody like Bjork. You know, I have, oh, yeah. who I just have so much respect for creatively. Uh -huh. I, but but even there, you know, I don't think of her as like, oh yeah, I'm gonna listen to Bjork play some instrument. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. She's more just of a creative person. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. I know there are, but you're right. There are girls out there, but they're not just. They're just not household names yeah. in the rock and roll field. Yeah, I mean, um, uh, Whitney Petty is one, she's in this band called Thunder Pussy. Oh yeah. And um, she's amazing. Brittany Howard from Alabama Shakes. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, They're both good bands. Lauren LG from Thelma and the Sleaze. Like, she's incredible. But no one knows them. Like, right, right. You can't, you know, yeah. So, I mean, people know them, but they're not, they don't know them like they know Britney Spears. Right. Um, that name. And, yeah, it's just weird. Yeah. I don't... And, and that, another thing, part about the women being performers, um, is that there's also, women also have, like, there's an image to uphold, um, there's a window for women, um, it has, you have to look a certain way. Mm -hmm. You don't have to, but like most chance of success is being this age from like 17 years old to 25. Right. And, um, looking this way and, you know, this weight and, um, if it's like, if, if that's what you're basing, if, if, people like you because you're cute and you can play a few, like you can write a couple songs, like that's not going to last very long. Um, so I don't know. Right. I, just, I wish like if, if I learned to play the guitar and like eventually like, like really shred at it, like I could be a studio musician where like my face doesn't matter, you know? Right. right. So that's something, I don't know like how many other like women artists think about that, but there's like, right. Yeah. yeah, I think I think that's it is definitely more so for women uh, because that's part of this, you know, it's a bigger cultural problem. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but it also exists for men too, and I, you know, there was a, I think the the invention of MTV really changed the mm. whole ball game, right? Yeah. Where you know, because if you look back to the '60s and '70s. Yeah. Um, Oh, you're right. Tracy mentioned uh, Heart. Nancy Wilson was a good totally. example of yeah. early rock and roll guitar. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, that really shifted the game into image. Because you look back at the 60s and 70s and, like, you look at some of those dudes, you know, in the thinking of guys, you know, you look at some of those guys, it's like, they would have never made it in the 80s or 90s. Yeah. You know, yeah, like, totally. just, like, just not really photogenic people. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it didn't really matter. Yep. But now it matters. I mean, yeah. there's a lot. Yeah. And even more so now because now everything we do is through a camera lens. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the live show is even becoming rarer. Yeah. You know, it's more likely to be a YouTube streamer yeah. or uh, whatever this or that, you yeah. know, for totally. live streaming. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Fortunately, I, my exceedingly good looks yes. make me yeah. a perfect yeah. fit for this <laughs> genre. Yeah. But <laughs> no, but it's true. And, and, and you know, it's something... I, I've noticed, I've experienced, you know, like, coming into, uh, you know, moving to Spokane um, at the age that I did, and then trying to, like, just get into, like, playing original music. It's, it's one thing, like, I could I could do, you know, like what Tommy G does, right, yeah. playing all the time, and he, he, you know, he works hard at it, um, and playing covers, covers and bars and stuff, and that's that's fine, but if you're trying to, like, play original music to people who want to hear music, not yeah. just have something in the background while they're eating. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's hard. It's hard if you're, it's hard, especially if you're not in that, you know, man or woman, it's hard if you're not in that specific demographic of yeah. where people are going to be like, 
I want to go see that person. Yeah. You know? Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's a tough thing, right? Yeah. But you're young and beautiful, so what are you worried about? Well, thank you. But, like, <laughs> I, I, I mean, I remember thinking, like, yeah, there's the 17 to 25 age gap, and I'm, like, I'm starting at 25. Like, huh. Well. Right, right. <laughs> I mean, and, the, and that's, that's more, it's, like, we can work as hard as we want to like change culture and that's a great thing to be be trying to change and be like like we matter even if we're like as we age and as we sag and as our hair goes gray and like we'll all like we matter and like we can still write songs right but like at the end of the day (laughs) me yelling at people is not going to put food on the table exactly like what other skills are there like if if I don't get to beat all of culture, like if you know, in <laughs> right. my, during my lifetime, like, am I still gonna be able to like survive? Right. And that's kind and make of make a living. That's where it's like, well, we like. Well, that's why I wanted to put some, like, time into a skill that was where the, right. the looks and the image didn't matter. And I think right. that like, you know, learning an instrument like in and out, I'm still, it's still right. a goal of mine. Right. Well, and I, I mean, it seems to me too, though, that that you're you're also acknowledging, uh, to some degree, uh, the necessity of image, right? Because, uh, you know, we were talking earlier about like performing and you know picking out outfits mm-hmm. and stuff. And I noticed, like, for sure, you've got like a stage thing happening. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and knowing you in person, right? It's really different than yeah. what you see on stage. Yeah. Um, so there is an acknowledgement of, of performance culture, I guess yeah. it is, right? Yeah. Uh, that's something I think I always struggled with. I, I, I really admire your ability to do that. Mm. Uh, I meant to say that earlier when we were talking about that. Uh, you know, with, with my bands, it was I was always so focused on just like wanting to deliver the music. Like, mm-hmm. just let me stand here and sing my songs, yeah. right? Like, I didn't want to be yeah. showy. It felt, it didn't feel like me. Yeah. And I was never drawn to the stage in other ways, like musicals or acting uh-huh. or anything like that. So for me, it was always like, I was really lucky with my band Baba Seth because when uh, our sax player Hope joined, she's just like a natural, you know, she's just, she's really great at being on stage, yeah. talking to the audience. Yeah. It's like being a, you know, yeah. like being a show thing. And I don't know, part of it is like, you know, black culture has a little bit more of that, mm. uh, that's part of the culture more, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, like that it's like an acceptable thing, right? Yeah. To be like, all right, here's the show. Let me give yeah. you the show. Yeah. And I was, you know, I'm from this like, you know, Protestant white kind of, you know, it was yeah. sort of like, no show. Yeah, no show. Show is bad. Show yeah. is bad. <laughs> so I just wanted to just say my message, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. But it's really, it's and it's, but it's got to be loads of fun. It's got to be loads of fun. And I mean, because I love playing on stage. Uh, but as soon as I start, like, if I start dancing or something, yeah. I start immediately feel like super awkward. Uh-huh. And, and yeah. Like a doofus or something. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. I, I, that's, I think it's something that I just enjoy. Right, right. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. It is. It's great. Yeah. Rock and roll. Sure. Let's do another song. I want to hear some more music. Cool. And what time are we at? Just to make sure. Oh, yeah. What, what, we're good. Um, just want to make sure I do have a re- rehearsal eventually. Okay, it's about what six twenty, and you got to be somewhere at like seven thirty or something. Seven. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we won't go like super much longer, but. Cool. Um, you want to do keyboard or guitar? Well, since I'm here, maybe let's just do a guitar All song. All right. Let's do okay this one. This one. It's like also I don't play. I don't play acoustic very often, so it's mm-hmm. a little bit harder to play. Like I'm not. Oh yeah, to, for yeah. sure, for sure. You can get really spoiled. On I electric, got spoiled. Right? Yeah. It's like wow, it's so easy to play the notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is another uh, like kind of crossover song that I can play in both um, settings, I guess.
What's it called? Oh, so stupid. <laughs> it's called so stupid? No, it's called sense. Because I never came up with a better name. <laughs> That's the first word of the song. I actually. I'm stupid about that. Mm -hmm. I know. I just. It's just sense. Like, I, it's just a boring name. <laughs> I mean, I guess it'd be hard to call it, like, since you've been gone. Right. Yeah, since you've been gone! Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's, I've thought about calling it, well, maybe if I ever actually record it and put it on anything, it might be called Ode to a Jag, because it's actually about a Fender Jaguar. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Do you have a Fender Jaguar? No, I don't, but I no. had one in my possession for a while. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I didn't so, like it. No. I like the tellies. Yeah. I haven't spent much enough time with the tellies. Yeah. So. Yeah. I can't play um, strats, really, uh, because the way I play, uh -huh. um, I do a lot, my strumming is a little hard, and the volume knob's like right there. Yep. And I know people that are really good at like pulling the volume with their pinky while they're playing. You can get yeah. some real cool swelling yeah. and stuff. Yeah. But I always just like, you know, halfway through the first song, I sh the volume like shoots way up because yeah. I go down and yeah, yeah, break yeah. up to yeah. ten. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I have to have like volume has to be farther away. Yeah, I saw. I've seen a couple people tape their volume knob. Right, so right. To avoid can. that. Yeah. 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 It, ha it hasn't ever really been a problem for me. So, yeah, I'm a strat. I remember you had that. Do you still have that red hollow body? Mm -hmm. That was a nice guitar. Yeah. That was a Gretsch or was it a Guild? A Guild, right, mm -hmm. right. That's yeah. a nice guitar. Yeah, I still play that one. Um, yeah, for I keep it in a, a weird tuning or okay. uh, just an open tuning. So, okay. what do you keep it in? What do you like? What's your uh, D sharp? Oh, yeah, so E flat. Okay, but like, what's the is it uh, what's the chord that it's like? E flat, uh, is it major? It's major. Okay, so you just have it like a one, three, five set it, up, or is it, it like it, one, well, five? it's like so. It's so my pedal the way it like tunes it. It's like it's dad. It's dad gad. Okay, it's so it's dad a dad gad, gad but it's sharp. It's yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right, that's a nice one because with that G you can get the fourth in there and yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nice. I think that's what it is. Yeah. Right. So that yes, if you is. so if you no, it's not. It's 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 dad fad. Okay. So it's one, th it's the D. So the, where you would have the four, you starts. actually have the major third. So it'd be like a straight up, like if you just strum it straight up and it's a, it's like a good chord, like a yes. major chord. Yes. So yeah, it probably is an F sharp if it's a yes. D, but a G if it's a D sharp. That's, that's, <laughs> right. I think that's yeah. where I'm at, is like, yeah. it's like, I, I, I do D sharp, A sharp, F double sharp. Right, right. Yeah, right. and that would be the F A. Yeah, so yeah, that, yeah. yeah. Cool, yeah. and do you, uh, you use that for slide, I would uh -huh. imagine? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, totally. Nice. Yeah, I saw uh, a little bit of slide in, that, in the video. Yeah. 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 Is that something, uh, how long have you been working on with the slide? That's another thing, is like, so the reason I think that I ended up writing that song was because I learned, uh, well, Elmore James song um it hurts me too and so he plays that slide mm. guitar and so basically i just had my guitar tuned to that and it because i had been learning that song and then i just picked it up and started like well right. what right. can i write and can i do anything with this yeah, on yeah, my yeah. own yeah and so i just started like picking out a little melody right. and right. then went from there yeah and that'll be like our like probably like our single, like if we ever get there and release it and, right. you know. Yeah, do you guys have, do you have anything out now? I saw you have a, there's something on Bandcamp that's just mm -hmm. like songs in a van or something or, or a yeah. like song in a van or something. Yeah, there's a song called In a Van. Right. Um, we have, so basically I have, we have five songs that I'm selling on CDs. Okay. But they aren't mastered yet. Okay. So, like, there's, like, a, there's a whole thing in the CD as, like, talking about it, that it's more of, like, they're all hand-stamped. It's more of, like, collector's piece if there's, right, right, they're right. cheap. Um, and then 
I figure that like once we get them like recorded and mastered and up like mixed the way we want to where we have enough time and money and resources to get them to be like we're proud of these right, and right. we can compete with anything else sound wise right um I don't know like I'll, I'll like I guess I'll just probably want to anybody that ever bought one of our these CDs like send me a picture and I'll send you a, a download right, code. Right, right, right. So, um, yeah. You know what um, Paul did with the tinfoil top hat? Oh, yeah. Um, was, so they, re they recorded their album and then he, he actually got thumb drives. Yes. And they're on lanyards. Uh-huh. You know? Yeah. So, so when he's selling them at shows, he's just selling a thumb drive on a necklace, yeah. basically. Yeah. Um, I guess that's the way of the world, right? <laughs> yeah. I've seen a couple people do that, and, like, I think that I understand, like, so many people are like, why are you selling CDs? No one uses CDs anymore. Right. Well, first of all, because they sell. People are buying them, so right. I... Right, the, the two cars that I have, like, I can only listen to CDs in them. Right. <laughs> so, like, I realize that not everyone is as poor as I am and has, like, nicer cars and stuff, but there's still, like... A bunch of us right. that that's all we can listen to. Right. And um, I still have a tape deck in my car. Yeah. <laughs> tapes, tapes are totally coming back. Right. And like, this is just the thing that's most accessible. So, like, if you are a person that likes the tactile thing, like with the album art, that like re right. read right. the credits. If you're that type of person, then here's a thing that you can take. And like, it's, I can't afford to do vinyl. Right. Like, I can't even That'd afford cool, right? to really do like cassettes yet because I don't yeah, yeah. have. An in with somebody with a cassette uh, recorder. Right. But, right. you know, so CDs are just easy right now. But yeah, like eventually, like for the people that just want to download it, like, right. I'll, we'll get that up. Yeah. But yeah. Not, not until it's like mastered for right. Right. all those things. Right. Cool. Yeah. You know, so I only saw, I haven't seen, like I said, I haven't seen the new group. I saw Donna Donna mm -hmm. at that festival. The oh, tenabulation. Yeah. That, was, that was, I think, the only time I got to actually see you. Yeah. You know, yeah. Since, since the days of the songwriting yeah. stuff. Um, and I just have to say, so, in being from Charlottesville, where where Dave Matthews came from, yeah. and, I, and I was, you know, I was playing in bands at the same time that they were just kind of getting started and, yeah. and making it big. And there was one thing that I can, that I really remember about those guys and it, they, they're you know it's a very different genre from like the rock and roll that mm -hmm. you know that you're doing but it's but they sh from right from the beginning when they first started playing uh there was a they had a a presence on stage mm -hmm. you know what i mean like yeah. it wasn't an arrogance but you just a confidence when they were on stage where it was sort of like yeah we we got it you know this is we're good <laughs> But it wasn't like, you didn't feel like, oh, God, yeah. they didn't think they are all that. Yeah. It was more of just like, you know, playing as if they're already a rock star. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, and for them, that didn't mean, like, demonstrative, like, oh, I'm a rock star. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. more just like, we're, you know. Yeah. You know, there was no hesitancy. There's yes. no, like, oh, sorry, oops, oops, yeah. sorry. You know, yeah. none of that. It was just like, I'm performing here. And, um... I noticed that when I was watching you, when I was watching you on stage, oh. I was like, you've got like, and that's honestly, that's probably what, at least 50% of it yeah. is like acting like you belong, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I was watching you thinking like, there is nothing limiting that girl except for herself mm. in terms of where you could go. You know what I mean? Like I just, cause you definitely have that, you've got that confidence. You've got a great presence on stage. Thanks. Um, yeah, it was really cool to see that. Actually, I, I think I think there's good things for you. In Thanks. Your yeah. Thanks. And your and your dedication to to hard work is yeah. That's really that's really key. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, Paul and I were talking about that. It's like, you know, being good and working hard at what you do and your craft. Uh, that's just like that's like the that's the bar for entry. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And when you look at like all these artists that are big and people often, especially like pop stars, there's people who disparage them of like, oh, they don't write their own material. Right. It's like, but man, every single one of those people from Britney Spears to whoever, yeah. 
uh, who's big now, I don't know, yeah. Cardi B, people like yeah. that, whatever. Yeah. I guarantee you all those people, man, they work their asses off. Yeah. And they are workaholics. Like yeah. they they put the time in. Yeah. And there's and the people that are out there that like come and go. Yeah. You know, like they, yeah. they like had that number one hit and then you never yeah. heard of them again. Yeah. Those are the people that aren't they're the ones that like they lucked into it. Yeah. But then they didn't want to put the you know, yeah. I think in a lot of cases they just yeah. didn't they don't have that same work ethic. Yeah. And I see that you really have that. Like yeah. I remember even at that tenabulation somebody was mentioning that you we had because we had to show up so early for those sound checks, you know, like uh, early in the morning yeah. or whatever. And then you went home and practiced guitar for a while, oh. you know, and then came back and played. It was like, I was like, that is dedication right there. Like, <laughs> what is your practice session like when you were when you were really spending a lot of time on the guitar? Was it a lot of scales? What was your what was your kind of what did that look like for you? Yeah, I would. Because um... it's hard to spend that much time on the guitar, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it it was um well and I had I didn't do it in a healthy way. So like <laughs> it was very unhealthy for a while. I was like obsessive and that was when I was like really deep into my anxiety phase. And um and so but it's like it sucks because like in that time I was like if I do this and if I do this and if I do it and I and I like push myself to the point of crazy like I know it's going to work. And it kind of did. Right, like, right. And um, just in terms of, like, I put all that work in, and now I have, like, a solid foundation. Even though I still mess up, I'm still messing up here. It's yeah. like, it's, I can recover. Right, and, right. Um, and there are things that I can do that, like, are setting me apart partially. So anyways, but it was, like, in that really obsessive phase, it was, mm. like, I was, I think my goal was five to seven hours a day. Wow. Uh-huh. And. That is a lot of shredding. It was a lot. <laughs> yeah. And it was like, I would break it down into like hours, like, or like right. 50 minutes, take a break, 50 minutes, take a break. Right. Um, to do, so I would do, yeah, I'd do scales. Um, and I would like do like all five positions of one like a pentatonic scale right. at a certain BPM mm -hmm. and then and I would do it and do it and do it and do it until I and then I would like try and get to the next 10 or 5 BPM and the next day I would start at that right. and then I would go you know right right um and then there was like uh practicing covers like learning people's solos what's that called when you learn a solo like note for note uh, oh right right Transcribing it. Transcribing it. Right. Yeah, so there would be that. Um, like, song, like, practicing the songs that I already had written and, like, right. my own stuff. Um, and, like, probably back then, what was that, like, a year and a half ago, I was still needing to... I could not imagine getting on stage without having practiced my solos for an hour. Right, right. Before. So I prob that's probably what I was doing is, like, I went home... And every single solo for each song, I would, I would do it, right. twenty times, tally mark, tally mark, tally mark. Right, right. And um, I don't. I probably sh should do more of that still because I. Whatever, I'm. I'm probably as accurate as I am. Yeah, yeah. I was back then right. without having to do that. Right, right. Um, but I still could get better. It just. Right. So. So. In your in your songs, when you when you're playing a guitar solo, is it mostly you you've constructed that solo beforehand? Yes. You're not like I've you're tried. not you don't improvise. Mm -mm. <coughs> There's like I've started to toy around with that now. Like now that I have like a consistent like now that I have rehearsals and I with people that I trust and like mm. and it's like we know we're gonna play these songs. We know that they go well in this version there's like a little bit of room for me to mess around. Right, right. But, um, and so like things are like morphing very slightly, mm -hmm. but not, no, I'm not like going way off the right, rails. Right. It's like maybe I'll like throw a couple extra notes quicker. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, um, and that's like where I want to go, but I just haven't gotten there yet. I haven't had time to. Right, right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. 
Let's do some more. Let's do more music. Okay. Let's do another song. I'll move on the keys for this. <laughs> Stepping on it, that's why. <coughs> okay. Cool. Um, so this one is kind of about uh like because I was a teacher, high school teacher yeah. for a while, and so this is like I mean it's kind of kitschy and it's called bad girl blues. But it's um, just about how like rock and roll is more fun, basically. So more fun than teaching. Yeah. Who knew? Yeah. Right. <laughs> and I usually play this with the whole band. Down if you're nice to be 
So what are you uh, listening to these days? What are you, where are you finding inspiration these days? Uh, okay. Well, like I said, I only have a CD player in my car. And so I've been listening to a lot of like local Spokane music. Okay. Um, but when I'm actually looking for inspiration or something that like is new to me so like I enjoy just listening to that it's probably what I'm listening to most mm -hmm. of all mm -hmm. um, but when I was bartending that was when I like I, I could get on Spotify and just like make a Spotify playlist and put it on the background and like I was drawn to more like um, Ty Seagal so he's kind of like garage fuzz rock okay um, and that whole like LA garage rock scene um, there's I'm like really into I'm getting into hip-hop stuff a lot more I really like pop music mm -hmm. like um, so I'm trying to think like a lot of what I'll listen to is like um, I've been studying vocals for a while now, so um, Andre Day is a vocal, um, a performer, singer-songwriter um, that's more in like a soul okay. vibe. Yeah, yeah. Um, Rihanna, I got obsessed with Rihanna for a little while there, um, and that was mainly because I was studying their vocals. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I, I'm into Frank. Frank Ocean right now, like nice. the. I I think that I would kind of like to be able to go like right now. This is what I put my time into, and yeah. this is what I know the most. But um, I would like to be able to, when I get back into songwriting and like I can spend a lot more time doing that. I see it probably going more of like, uh, like a, electronic production route, mm. um, where. Like, I can be, especially now, like, playing in a band and hearing how other people write bass lines, because I, I didn't really know how to do that. But now I'm, I'm getting some of those ideas, so now I could, like, it'd be fun to sit down in a room eventually and, like, write drum beats and, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. write the ba bass lines and, like, um, and then play guitar over right, that and right. do the keys and sing and, like, do the harmonies. Right, right. And, but... I, I really like that stuff. Like I like what Frank Ocean does, and I like the pop stuff that I'm hearing. Right. Have you heard? Um, have you heard Lights? No. -uh. I think that, that's what she's called. Canadian. Okay. You might like that. It's okay. but she there's there's an element of like sort of a pop and electronic thing, but then she's got a really killer band, you know. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Really. Uh, yeah, you, I think you'd probably like her stuff. Yeah. Check it out, like, on YouTube or something. Yeah. Um, yeah, nice. Yeah. So tell us again, you're, I know you're playing at the Observatory tomorrow night. Yeah. What about after that? What do we got coming up? 
Then it's playing Walla Walla uh, the next night, and then... Then the Gorge. Then the Gorge. Right. <laughs> That's how it works, right? Sasquatch. Yeah. <laughs> They're bringing back Sasquatch just for me. Um, yeah, no, I we got like we booked a bunch of shows in Oregon. We just got back from playing Oregon last week, and we're going back to do a very similar run. Yeah, but, I saw you were in Eugene. Right? Yeah. yeah, so we'll go back to Eugene, um, Salem, Portland, Medford. Um, so we'll do those next. I'm doing a couple shows in Moscow. A couple, like a, a couple solo shows in Moscow, a solo show in Coeur d'Alene, and then March first we come back to Spokane and play the Observatory again. So, right on. And who else is on the bill tomorrow night? Ooh, um, DM, and they are like super fun, um, like dance rock. Okay, local. Too, local, so much energy, so crazy, super fun. Um, guy, synth guy, um, and then. Uh, electric guitar shredder and they just it's like nothing I've ever seen in Spokane before right on. and then uh, Nat Park and the Tunnels of Love I, have you ever seen them? Mm -mm. they're like um, soul soul rock and roll like and the front man is just um, Ryan he's awesome and like so the theme of the night is just crazy fun like gotcha. it's gonna be high energy cool yeah cool yeah and what time do things get started over there? 9.30. Okay. Doors at 9, show starts at 9.30. Gotcha. Yeah. Right yeah. on, right on. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think if I got anything else here to go. Uh, would you say that overall, as a songwriter, that you have uh, any kind of um, unified message or idea? Like, do you have like a... This is kind of like what I like to write about. I know that's kind of a weird question. No. It's a little bit abstract, but yeah. you know. Like yeah. if you had a theme. I think I've probably written most of my songs about relationships. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but so I guess like personal experience is like the main thing but there's not like a an overall message right for, that ties everything together right right yeah um i think like like we already touched on it like the empowering women yeah, to yeah. to be instrumentalists and um in addition to like singers and songwriters is Right. is part of like the messages of the whole thing and I think that's right. been from the beginning that's really right. been um but it's it's not what I necessarily write songs about right right yeah. right it's not like you're out every song is like hey yeah. women yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> pick up a guitar yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> gotcha gotcha yeah. but yeah no I, I and that's what I mean that's why I was sort of saying it in an abstracted way because clearly you know like like for me my I would if I were to look at all my music I think mm. well my sort of theme would be uh, the disillusion of the ego, oh. right? So even though I may not write every song about right. that, yeah. that seems to be sort of like the gestalt of what's uh -huh. happening. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, totally. Uh, so, and, and Paul had something too, you know, we both, both kind of resonated with this idea of some sort of, even if you're not necessarily, you know, like, yeah, you're not writing every song about it, but there's, you know, most songwriters have some thing you yeah. know that's sort of like this this blanket that covers all yeah. the stuff that they're doing and, yeah um human relationships of course yeah you know i mean i guess all of our songs in a way are right because mm -hmm. we're humans and relationships is the thing that we all have in common like every right. human on the planet right right whether it's romantic or whatever kind of relationship I mean, right. it's all about i think that maybe more like when there i have way more songs about that I can be like, oh yeah, I wrote this song because Joey didn't call me back right. this week, you know, <laughs> right. and I was pissed off, and right, I, you know, right. um, and so there, I think there, I have more songs that are like, this was the situation in the relationship, yeah, yeah, um, that this is what I was feeling at that time, um, like I would say maybe like, like seventy five percent percent of my songs, I can be like. 
you that could, was, you could that trace was this 2000, was... That was May of 2015 right, right. when this was happening. Right. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, see, I don't have... I don't really have that in my cell right now. So, oh. so I'm always fascinated when people have that different thing, because, I mean, not to, uh, like... Because I, it doesn't bore me in any way, but I have what I would say was like a pretty, you know, boring life in a sense, right? Like I don't, especially like when it comes to relationships. Tracy, I'm not saying that we have a boring relationship, but but we got married when we were like 21, right? Like we've been married almost 30 years now, uh, wow, and, so cool. and you know, so I never really had, you know, once I was done with high school, I never really had any of that relationship stuff you know what I mean that you so like as a songwriter it was I had to draw on those things more abstractly yes you know like okay I'm putting myself into the head of somebody who's going through this yeah so if I write a song about a breakup song yeah. like the last time I broke up with somebody was the freaking 1980s yeah. you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, so I have to kind of like you have to just yeah. sort of like well okay yeah you know but it's but like I was saying about human relationships right it's like it's not that hard to do because we're all humans yeah and we all understand you know, you know, we think of ourselves as like snowflakes, right? Like yeah. everybody's unique, and it's true we're all unique. But we also share, you know, the same. Just like every musician is is using the same twelve notes to yeah. make all this variety of music, yeah. we're all using these, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. For most people, it's maybe like five, four or five emotions, you yeah. know, or if it's a, it's a limited palette. Yeah. From which we're making all these paintings of yeah. ourselves. Yeah. And uh, that's a really great thing for us as songwriters uh -huh. because it, it makes it easier to tap into, right? Yeah. It's not like, well, this is only going to resonate with mm. three people. Right. Because I'm a snowflake and yeah. my experiences are so unique yeah. that if I write about my life, no one's going to know what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. You know, that's why, that's where you get young people who are like, oh, no one understands me. Yeah, it's like, yeah. no, everybody understands me. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like, this is the world, yeah. and you're a human, and we all understand you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but that's, I think that's one of the great things about being a we You don't necessarily, it's the same with a novelist or any kind of writer or that kind of thing where it's like, you don't necessarily have to have that experience yeah. to understand what a human feels when they feel loss or feel yeah. oh, joy or attraction or any of those things mm -hmm. right uh, yeah cool. certainly a fun thing right yeah writing songs playing them for people it's yeah. a weird thing it's a really weird thing right when you think yeah. about it yeah like abstractly it's yeah. just a really odd thing that we do yeah uh, most people don't do that right like most uh -huh. people their lives are kind of contained within and then that outlet becomes something else mm -hmm. some other form of thing maybe they, they talk to their friend or whatever yeah. But yeah. like as songwriters, we we tend to tell the whole world <laughs> what's what's happening in that little yeah. space, you know? Yeah. It's a weird thing. Yeah. yeah. It is weird. I went to a Noah Gunderson show oh, nice. a couple of weeks. Do you know him? I know who he is, yeah. Okay. And he's an incredible songwriter. He's like, right, whoa, right. up there. Like, I don't even know how he continues to churn out that many songs. Right. Um. Anyways, um, but he was just like, He's like, this is such a weird thing that we do. Mm -hmm. It's like, you all come, you all pay money right. to come and stand way longer than you would ever stand anywhere. Right, right. And close, way closer to people than you would ever usually stand. <laughs> right. And like, just be quiet. Right, <laughs> just, right. It's, yeah, so it's like an interesting, it is, the whole thing is interesting. Yeah. Yeah, really, it's fascinating. Yeah. I it's thought cool I would have figured life. it out by now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like almost fifty, yeah. I thought I had figured it out, but no, it still just it still puzzles me. Yeah. That that the whole thing of like yeah. playing music, writing songs, and people hearing them. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. I think it's so cool what you're doing though. Like to have a have a a place for people to come and talk about that and like share their. That was like so important for me, like in the like right when I started, like to have a place. We're a safe place. Right, right. Where other songwriters yeah. were. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. it is a weird thing. And, like, not, there aren't many people that are in that boat that understand, no, like, no. all the different, like, facets of, like, you're pouring your heart out and you're also, like, trying to hit the notes at the same time. And then right. you're like, other <laughs> people and, like, trying to move the mic. Right. While, like, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, and it was that originally the, the motivation there was just that, because I, 
I had it's not, not something I'd really thought about much through my life because I'd always been playing in a band and, and just doing whatever and um, then coming here to a new place and then thinking like well okay so how do I get my foot in the door yeah. and so I started going around open mic nights yeah. and it just struck me it was like okay I really don't like this format you know because it's a bar and somebody gets up there and plays you know brown eyed girl uh -huh. everyone's like yeah, yeah. brown eyed girl yeah, woo yeah, yeah, yeah. you know and somebody gets up there and plays an original song and everybody's just talking yeah because they don't know the song yeah Therefore, they're like, well, I'm not going to really pay attention to right. this because I don't know it. Yeah. You know? Um, and I thought, well, that's just kind of frustrating for people that, that want to, to play original music, uh -huh. you know? And I wanted to have some avenue where pe or some venue where people could be like, we're there to hear original music. Yeah. You know, it's songwriters coming to hear songwriters and yeah. kind of like have a shared sense of like, I know what you're going through. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. So give me your new stuff. I don't want to hear you play brown eyed girl yeah in fact if you used to play that i'm gonna kick you out <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right because yeah. that's that was and it was just like like so many songs or or anything that we do like it's born out of a frustration mm. with the way things are and we want to change it yeah <laughs> uh, yeah anyway i'm so glad you were on here that's super cool yeah thanks for inviting yeah, me yeah yeah stoked. And i this is uh, we're, we're going to make sure and archive this because in five years I'll be able to sell copies of this. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> you get me a copy. That's all. Awesome. Cool. Well, go to, go to the observatory tomorrow night, all 17 million of you now. Yes, watching. yes. Thank you. 17 million of you. <laughs> or the two of you. Cheers. Which are probably on the East Coast. And then... <laughs> 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 but in any case, uh, yeah, I look forward to, to hearing more from you. Cool. Awesome. And and I do want to get you on our the Friday thing with mm. with your band, yes. so we can get the okay. whole get the whole feeling, yeah. and whole experience. Yeah, awesome. That's really cool. Thank you for okay. being here. Thank you. Oh yeah. Mm. And good to see you again. Yeah, you, you too. too Goodbye, my children. <laughs>